many questions for you as we possibly can. Before we get to some of those questions, though, let's check in on this market. And kicking off with you, Julia Lee, what did you make of it? What do you think of the week that was? Well, pretty good performance for the Australian market, not only today, but for the week that was as well. If we have a look at the Aussie market, the leads weren't very good coming into our session today. In fact, the futures pointing to a loss of at least 1%, but we did see the market only down by 0.3%. We saw the same thing for the week, a good performance, in fact, a positive performance. It's great to see the market finish in the black with a pretty respectable performance, a gain of 2.4%. Most sectors trading higher and the best this week, the utilities and the energy energy space. So that was a little bit surprising given the pullback that we have seen in oil prices. But today, of course, it was mainly dominated by earnings and it was a surprising, uh, I guess, a sp some surprising price action happening across the board. If we have a look at Len Lease, that was down by 3.7 percent, but you need to consider also that its shares have been up 20 percent in the last 52 weeks. Same with Fairfax. We saw it rising 7.1 percent, but then again, you have to consider that for the last 52 weeks, we've seen the stock down by about 50 percent. So earnings very much in focus this week but at the end of the week we're in the black. Michael McCarthy why is everyone liking it I suppose focus on on Ben Bernanke and his speech an interesting part that is also going to be taking place at the symposium. Uh, Jean-Claude Trichet will be speaking I've got to be honest with you I'm very interested to hear what he has to say about Europe. Absolutely. Europe, uh, a few alarm bells going off in Europe overnight and I'll be watching his speech very closely. So Saturday morning is when he speaks and overnight a number of developments. In fact, we've seen Greece very much in focus. Finland still dragging um, heels in in terms of wanting collateral in terms of that European financial stability fund. So it looks like that second bailout package, not a done deal at all. Mm. And then we saw Greece as well implementing once again the emergency liquidity measures. And this is for Greek banks that need short-term cash. So a few alarm bells there, but then add into the equation, we saw the Bank of England reopening swap lines with the European Central Bank and the European Central Bank in the last week drawing down another $500 million through the swap lines with the Federal Reserve. So $500 million US dollars. So Europe very much in focus. I guess it hasn't been making headlines, but certainly a few alarm bells going off in terms of Europe. Not only that, the short selling bans were due to be lifted tonight we've seen short selling bans in France in Italy in Spain in Belgium and now they've been extended out as well so it looks like no short selling once again in Europe it does look like the situation there still one to be watching very very closely so it's not just Ben Bernanke that will be speaking at Jackson Hole the ECB president Trichet will also be there no doubt markets will be tuning in very closely to that one too of the, uh, of the reports we got out today Julia you mentioned a little earlier a few of them but let's focus on perpetual amazing amazing performance on uh, on the market is it all because of a, a 70 million dollar buyback I think it's two reasons. One's mainly that $70 million share buyback. And the reason why the market likes buyback is because they're so tax effective. If we have a look at this particular buyback, the capital component of this buyback will be $9.22, which means that most investors will be actually booking a capital loss, which of course is quite tax effective. And the rest of the amount will be made up through a fully frank dividend. Now, the final price hasn't been decided, but there will be a discount associated with that as well. So not only get, are you getting a capital loss probably on your investment but also the rest of the amount is made up with a fully frank dividend we, which we know is also uh, quite tax effective as well so it can be quite a tax effective way to exit shares but not only that there's a sense of a bit of a turnaround in perpetual we we saw from their update uh, in August that they have been making some changes and just try, trying to revitalize their business they've cut off some of their underperforming business in particular the Dublin fund which has been their international fund especially to the, the, their institutional investors um, that's all gone now so that seven million dollar loss that that particular fund uh, was contributing is has now disappeared and smart super which has also been underperforming they've sold that off as well so this company really looking at realigning and repositioning their business and you just get a sense that perhaps it is um, I, I guess a bit of a change for this company uh, which has been struggling over the last few years so perpetual a great result today the shares have been down around about 20 percent in the past mm. year but great to see a very strong performance on the back of this buyback as well as a sense of revitalization in terms of its strategy. One of the stocks everybody's talking about at the moment in terms of the gains? 
If we have a look at Telstra, if we do see a change of government, I guess the two key risks are in the area of regulatory risk and the structural separation that we're seeing. And if we have a look at Bell Potter's estimates, we're putting a value of about 31 cents on the NBN deal, the $11 billion deal, and a value of about 8 cents on the separation of Telstra. So that gives you an idea on how much the share price could be impacted. In terms of short term, uncertainty is a negative, so I think it will be a short term negative for Telstra until we see a clearer picture of the coalition's strategy in te terms of te telcos. We got a little bit of insight into that with Malcolm Turnbull's speech uh, earlier on in the m month where he outlined the co coalition's alternative and it seems to be a new company called Network Co which would take into account MBN's assets as well as Telstra's copper as well and HFRC uh, uh, cables as well. So it looks like this alternative strategy may still be a positive for Telstra but without all the details it's really hard to put a value on it. So two key risks I guess around the NBN and separation. Mm. 31 cents we put a value on that NBN deal, that 11 billion dollar deal and 8 cents on separation.